Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a knife, should we call it a review? Eh, I got a knife video to share with you guys. Um, this is <laughs> the Max Ace Titanus. Now let's get this out of the way real quick. For some reason, <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised, right? <laughs> After doing what I've been doing on YouTube for over five years and 3,100 uploads, I really shouldn't be surprised. But stuff like this, for some reason, it's like it, it's like a code, right? It's like a it, it's a trigger for certain people. For some reason, whenever people see you know over the top stuff like this, certain people just like they they just become rabid. They sprint, right? They, this is what happened. They saw this thumbnail and they sprinted in here. <gasps> they got in here and they were sweaty. Like they got through the door like, everyone, everyone, I have to warn you. This, this knife has no purpose. It's overbuilt for no reason. It's, it's not a serious knife. It, it's overpriced. But calm yourself. Calm yourself. Here's a towel. Imagine me throwing a towel over his face while he's talking. Calm yourself. All right. Let me uh let me let me give you a clue here. Absolutely no one is under the impression that uh you know this night I mean maybe a few people, right? But the vast majority of people know what's going on here. This is Max Ace being Max Ace, and it's fun, right? <laughs> the people who are aware of this thing's existence have been around in the knife world long enough to be able to distinguish between something that is over the top for the sake of being over the top versus something that is functional, even if it is within the same price tier. Yes, this thing is priced ridiculously. Yes, it is absolutely 100% less convenient than other things at the same price point or even substantially lower, right, that are actually made to be, you know, more convenient and more functional. You can save your breath. I prom I know it feels like it's your responsibility to save all of the, the little goofballs who don't know better, but you're <laughs> it's just not the case. <laughs> yeah, this is a crazy, uh, another crazy Max Ace thing. I mean, at this point, I have to assume that Max Ace looks at that type of feedback. I mean, I think Max Ace knows who their buying audience is, right? Um, and, and the buying audience knows exactly what Max Ace is doing. I, I honestly think Max Ace is just trolling people. Um, I, I think they're going a, 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 so massively over the top. I mean, they obviously know how to make a good functional knife. Take a look at the Black Mirror, which is, you know, it's almost like an alternate universe, like, um, functional version of this. It's much smaller. The blade's much thinner, right? It's way less expensive. They obviously know how to do that, right? Um, but I think every now and then they go, hey, let's make another one of those gigantic, ridiculous things that's like massively over the top. Sure. And people like to collect this stuff. They're always in limited runs, right? So this thing is 100% ridiculous, right? Um, and it's okay to enjoy this stuff without it needing to have a specific role. I honestly can't think of anything that this knife would be the best at. Right? I think that there's, in almost every circumstance, a better tool for the job, a better knife for the job. Right, um, But again, I don't think that's why people are buying this stuff. I'll link the listing right down below, but eh, these are sold out. They are sold out pretty quickly. Right, um, these, are, uh, these types of things are pretty popular, these massive, crazy, overbuilt knives. People like to collect them. They're freaking expensive, though. I'm going to go over it, tell you guys what I think. Thanks so much to Max Ace for supplying this for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'll let you guys know right now, since these are gone, the base price of this model was like $530. They had a super crazy Insano version with like Zerka tie that was as high as 800 and something dollars, right? There's a lot of material here. Even with Max Ace making knives out of China, uh, if you didn't know, Max Ace has um, some of the best production quality on earth. That's going to come as a big old wet canoe paddle to the face for some people. Yes, I mean that. Their production manufacturing quality is some of the best on earth, right? Costs less to make something like this in China than it does the United States. But that being said, this is very, very high quality, crazy amount of titanium, and a massive chunk of M390. Um, absolutely crazy. Let's go ahead and measure it. Overall length is coming in at... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we got here? 
11, uh, almost 11 and a quarter inches. Totally reasonable. Five inches of blade, right? 4.75 inches of cutting edge. Cold steel fans are just desperately. <laughs> How dare this thing exist? <laughs> oh, man. I'm stirring the pot today. Okay. Um, yeah, it's freaking huge. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. So up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 <laughs> and the Ontario Rat Model 2. Um, it's pretty big. How about we just do a few? I don't, I don't know that we really need to do like a ton of size comparisons, right? I don't even really, you guys kind of know what these knives are, right? You guys get it. How about the bug out? That makes, that makes total sense, right? I'm sure there's a ton of people wondering like, hmm, which, which do I go with? The bug out or the Max Ace Titanus, right? How about the Spider Co. Para 3? Doesn't the Max Ace Titanus, it looks like, like they took the Para 3 and they, they like replaced a bunch of, you know, the organic parts with like, robot parts and pumped it full of steroids and you know we got this like crazy <laughs> ultra super future mech spider co all right how's the action on this guy well the action's crazy fall shut actually kind of dangerous because the, the it's running on bearings right um and the blade is massive in fact the blade is approaching a quarter inch um if you you know, are under the impression that like Medford makes the biggest knives out there. This will dwarf pretty much anything that Medford makes. Uh, and even, you know, like the Praetorian pot tie, which is just slightly thicker. This is 235 thousandths, right? Praetorian tie is a quarter inch. But this is substantially larger and substantially heavier, right? Max Ace makes some of the most freakishly huge knives I have ever seen. Uh, weight on this guy... I'm sure it's totally reasonable. Wow, only 13.76 ounces. I only have one knife in my collection. Well, wait, hold on. I got a couple of knives that are the same or slightly bigger. Here's here's some other freakishly huge Max Ace knives, right? Actually, we should have done comparisons with the other Max Ace ones, right? So here's the Max Ace Titanus versus the Max Ace Hephaestus which is absolutely a huge knife. And then here it is up against the Vortex, which is an even bigger Max Ace knife with an even thicker blade. I mean, this is this is actually bigger than a quarter inch, right? Um, so weight-wise, right, and here it is up against the thickest knife that I own, which is the, uh, the Alpha Beast. It's definitely a little bit thinner than the Alpha Beast, but absolutely massive. Let's weigh them all, right? So the Titanus... Uh, Coming in at, uh, is this, is that what this is? All these freaking big thick boy names. Oops, sorry. The, some of these knives are so big that they shut the scale off and change it to grams when you set it down. The face disc coming in at 10.83. The vortex coming in at almost exactly the same weight, 3.86, right? And then the alpha beast coming in at whoop, a whole pound, right? So there you go, amidst uh, the other super monsters, I think those all qualify. Um, yeah, it's uh, really big. <laughs> I'm not sure how much more detail I need to go into, right? Um, let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. I'm just realizing, that the pivot, which looks like it has proprietary hardware, actually has a special tool that it came with. I think this is just, again, Max Ace like being funny. But this, uh, these knives come with an insane amount of additional hardware. And in this case, since they decided to do, <laughs> you know, a um, little bit different uh, pivot, which, by the way, they give you extra pivot hardware. It's all in there. It comes with a tool, right? So you <laughs> stick that in there and run a little bar through there and turn it, right? <laughs> Would it have been more convenient for them to use a torque screw? Well, sure, but that assumes that uh, the person who needs that convenience is the person who is um, carrying this as if it actually has a serious role in their lives, right? So I think that the pivot is appropriately, it's, it's, uh, the, it, the ridiculousness of the pivot corresponds to the... Um, Enormous amount of self-awareness that has to come with a purchase of an uh, the purchase of an item like this, right? Um, it's insane. So who cares, right? It's almost like, you know, if you have 
enough money to buy a car that costs a million dollars, right? At that point, does it even really matter if you decide to like if it's a like some kind of crazy rare like gold plated Lamborghini? It, I mean, is it even that crazy to like put a lift kit on it, you know, and put like thirty inch rims on it? I mean, at that point, it's almost like who cares? <laughs> it's it's already it's already ridiculous. It's already so far beyond something that the person who bought it definitely didn't need more than a Toyota Corolla. I guarantee it. They didn't need it, but it's that it doesn't matter, right? This thing didn't need to have this, so they went ahead and put that lift kit and 30-inch wheels on it because who cares, right? Um, so that's that's what we're working with there. Uh, the rest of the hardware is um, pretty standard stuff. We've got, I'm going to guess, a T8. Did I already tell you guys my tools were recommendable? Well, they are. We got a bunch of crazy screws in here holding in, like, in turn. That one's holding in a massive stop pin. Look at the size of that stop pin. Uh, and then we've got T8, a whole bunch of T8 hardware down here. It's actually a pretty simple construction. It looks like it would be really, really complicated. These are inlays, so you don't actually have to take them out. This is all part of the frame. It's really just six screws. So it's, I'm sorry, it's eight screws because you have to take the screws out for the stop pin. I don't know why they did screws for the stop pin. They could have just made that floating. Um, but screws for the stop pin, eight screws on each side, and then the pivot. And it'll come out. Everything will come apart pretty easily. Like if you did want to disassemble this, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Make sure you have, uh, you know, the right tools for the job, and you should be good to go. Okay, we did blade stock thickness, weight, all of that stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about the meat and potatoes here. Wow, this thing is huge. It actually does have a bit of detent, which makes it surprisingly... I mean, you know, the Vortex was so big, and I think the detent just wasn't quite, like... The knife is just, there's just so much, there was so much blade on the Vortex, right? And the detent is just, I don't know if it was like tuned as best they could, but this guy actually has a reasonable, for the size of the blade, right? Watch this, turn sideways. Yeah, there's, there's detent there, which means throwing it with the thumb cannons um, or with the little sp <laughs> spider co opening slot, right? Um, it actually works, right? I, a lot of people in the short were saying like, that'd be great for kitchen, st for like food prep. Ah, no. I mean, here's the problem. You know, a, <laughs> a kitchen knife, while it is shaped similarly to some kitchen knives, uh, the issue is that the edge geometry is not one that's going to make any, like if you try to cut a tomato with this, you're much more likely to just smash it, right? Now the blade will slice. That's not to say that the blade is so thick that it won't slice. It absolutely will, right? You can see right there. There's plenty, plenty of slicing ability in the blade, but it's really thick, right? Um, so, what would I recommend using this blade for? I can't. I honestly can't think of any serious, like, use for this, right? It's uh, this is what this is why I like it. I, I'm going to keep this. I'll t I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. I like it because it's insane. I like it because it takes the entire concept of a knife and throws it out the window, right? It's the same reason that I like the PMP Alpha Beast and the, you know, the Max Ace of Faces. I am someone who can very easily identify a functional and utilitarian uh, cutting apparatus, right? The knives that I actually carry on my person day to day are reasonably sized, right? Some of my favorite user knives are the Para 3 or the Demco 80 20.5 or the Ritter Hogue, right? I think these are almost universally considered good daily cutting knives. But I like this for a totally different reason, right? I don't need this to do knife things. I just like it because it's freaking ridiculous. It's hilarious and ironic to me that it is made with some of the most premium and tight tolerances on earth, right? It's titanium and the little intricate pieces, while absolutely over the top, right? Intentionally over the top. The milling, the milling is insane. The level of precision milling on this thing is unreal. It is so completely and totally unnecessary. And I think that that's funny, right? When you see something that is so unbelievably over the top, Right? It's an ironic creation. It completely and totally undoes the foundation of what it is. When it's done on purpose, it's kind of funny, right? I kind of, I don't know, I kind of appreciate stuff like that. That's absolutely what this is, right? It caters to a very specific crowd of people. And I think Max Ace has their buying audience, you know, I think they've zeroed in on it, right? 
It's insane. And it's it's insanity. It's 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 very high quality insanity, is what it is. There's a lot of attention to all of the little teeny tiny details of this insanity, right? Um, so yeah, the blade is a little bit of two-tone. We've got some satin and a little bit of maybe some bead blasting or glass blasting down here. It looks nice, right? It's a little rough inside. Here's a different finish on the inside, which is kind of nice. Huge, massive chunk of M390. Uh, Max Ace is, is a little low <laughs> on their heat treatment, which is a little bit silly to talk about considering we're way beyond the realm of function here. But I still am a firm believer, even if the um, buying audience of this thing... Uh, I encourage you all to look down in the comments and find the guy who aggressively missed the point here. Find him. He's there. There are some people who just cannot help it, right? Just hop down there real quick and find the guy who aggressively missed the point of this whole video. Um, but, uh, you know, I am a firm believer that even if you are catering to the audience that likes the ridiculous stuff, right, myself included, and even if that audience never really plans to use it or put it through anywhere near the paces that it it's absolutely capable. Because make, make no mistake, this is a very durable and functional object. It 100% could be used very hard, right? I mean, I haven't even mentioned the fact that we have a third lock here, the pin lock, which is actually over in the case. It's one of these. I've got a, a ton of these now. But this guy will screw in there and create a third point of contact for the lock, making it, yes, Cold Steel uh, fans, as strong as the triad lock. I know that that, you know, is really hard, you know, it's like, you know, no way, anything could be as elite. Yeah, it's really, it, that's it, that's all that it is. It's three points of contact, right? Um, but yeah, it, it makes it super strong. Um, but uh, even if um, people plan don't plan to actually put it through its paces, I think the steel should be, you should be hitting, um, you know, the, the right range. And in my opinion, um, obviously it depends on geometry. There's a big, it depends on what people are going to use it for, right? But when it comes to M390, I think that 59 is too low. So while I think Max Ace's range is either 59, 61, or even worse, 58 to 60, if that's the case, 58 is not, is completely and totally unacceptable. 59 is essentially unacceptable. 60 to 62 should be the industry standard for, you know, this level, this production level of M390. If you're buying a custom knife, right, it's being custom heat treated and it's got super thin edge and you want it heat treated to 63 or even 64, which I think is a bit too high, then okay, right? But I think 60 to 62 is completely and totally appropriate. And I think that companies like Max Ace, especially when they're charging what they're charging for this, you got to be, you know, Again, even if it's not going to be used, right? You gotta, you gotta be hitting those numbers, right? You gotta be hitting that. You can't, you can't just say the motor's capable of producing X amount of horsepower and then it doesn't actually do it, right? So we gotta, we gotta be hitting those numbers. And there's going to be people disagreeing with me or saying that it's stupid to expect that of a knife that you, you fully recognize as something that's not really meant to, you know, even though it can withstand use, it's not going to be used, right? I understand the insanity of this. I'm just saying. If I'm going to pay this much money for it, I want it to. Even if I don't plan to use it, I want it to be capable. All right. Rant over, right? Huge backspacer. Holy moly. Massive, big, over the top. Everything here is just over the top. This area here is so thick. All right, look at the. I think one of the funniest things here is that, and this is how I know. I know that someone at Maxis has a sense of humor. I know 100%. Right? Look at the size of the clip. <laughs> They're screwing with us. They're screwing with us. These knives almost always have over the top. Look how low to the, it's so thin. This, it, was this even made to get over a pants pocket? <sighs> Ridiculous. I can't review this as a serious, because it's not a serious object. Look at this. Look at this clip. Come on. It's so, um, you almost don't know that it's there because it matches the inlays so well, right? But it's there. <laughs> Little tiny clip. They just did. Here's, if you're going to joke around, at least joke around with lefties too, right? Lefties like to get, lefties like to be a part of the joke too. Mill slot for the, nobody's going to care if you have mounting positions over here for the lefties because there's so much to look at anyways, right? I mean, look at this. We have, we have faux ventilation holes, right? So it's the air that's created, the pressure that's created as the blade comes down, right? The thing needs to purge air so that it doesn't explode when it <laughs> closes. <laughs> um, 
There is a, an inset uh, liner, which is actually, I think this is actually steel. Yeah, they didn't go, you know, they just put like a small, I mean, I say small, it's actually a gigantic, it's like, people are going to be like, steel, at that price, it should be a titanium liner with a, with a steel lock bar insert. This is like one giant steel lock bar insert, right? In order to, to think that, you'd have to forget entirely that this whole massive side of this frame is titanium, right? And then they've just latched, like, you could think of this as the world's biggest steel lock bar insert <laughs> on the inside there. So, the end result is, and by the way, we are, you know, they always do a good job with centering. Uh, the end result here, these are, by the way, these thumb studs double as the stops. Have you ever seen bigger stops there? This pin, this stop pin is only for the closed position, right? So... This thing locked out has a massive amount of surface contact between both of these stops, a huge inset steel thing, liner lock, inset frame lock, right? It's not really a frame lock. Steel lock, gigantic steel lock bar insert, whatever you want to call it. And then you could run that pin through there if you really wanted to go above and beyond, right? Mass, there's no way. It's not going to disengage, right? There are fixed blades that would break before this, right? Obviously, not, it's not stronger than every fixed blade out there, but I'm telling you that there are, like, if you if you just went with, like, a generic, like, fairly thin fixed blade, I 100% am certain that I could snap some fixed blades before I would get this lock to disengage, right? 100% certain. Um, we didn't even talk about the ergos. It's actually um, pretty comfy, pretty cozy to choke up on this thing, but you're you're way too aware of how ridiculous the thing in your hand is. It feels like, I don't know. It, you know, if I had my eyes closed, I would assume I was holding a power drill. <laughs> it's just, it wouldn't feel like I was holding a knife. It would feel like I was holding like a, like a, uh, a hammer stapler, right? <laughs> That's what it feels like. If I were to pick this thing up, I'd be like, oh, this is a hammer stapler. <laughs> it's way too big. Um, so yeah, but uh, anyways, yeah, fun, fun ergos, cozy but ridiculous, right? So what do I think? Um, I think that this is meant for uh, very specific people. I'm one of those people. I think it's cool, right? Do I think the price is fair? No, <laughs> I think I think Max Ace has figured out that you know the people who like this stuff are definitely willing to spend. A lot. They, I don't think Max Ace can afford even what they do. I, I don't think they can afford to make. I don't think it makes sense for them to make like five thousand of these. I think they make, you know, fifty to a hundred of them, and you know, in order to you know make it worth the time to design and manufacture these things, they mark them up like crazy, right? Um, so, do I think it's worth it? Not really. But then again, a lot of this stuff, you know, whether people care to admit it or not, or they care to recognize this fact or not. A lot of these massive monster Max Ace knives are actually holding their value, which is the case with anything that has like a really niche, like super tiny micro market interest, right? And it's limited run and all of that. So realistically, this is, I mean, like had they, had they put like a $400 price tag on it, I think there's enough material here that it makes sense, right? It's a funny object. Um, you know, in some sense, it's like it's not worth it at all, right? It depends on your perspective. I mean, it has very, like, it is capable, but it has very little practical use because it's it's more of an inconvenience than anything else, right? Some people are going to carry it and force it into a roll and tell themselves that it works better than their other knives, and that's fine, whatever. Uh, you If you bought it, you can enjoy it however you want, right? Um, but this is a, this is strictly a collector's thing. You, you, you almost have to recognize the humor in it to want it, right? And you have to really, really love that type of thing in order to spend that much money on it. The upside is that if you do, it will likely, you know, maintain its value. I'm not saying it'll be worth the same or more than what you paid for, but it'll, it'll probably hold on to it pretty well, right? Um, it's hard to say. I've just noticed that that's the case with a lot of this stuff, especially the higher end ones that come in the Mokume Gain or the, um, Zer the Zerkatai or the Black Tamascus or whatever, right? Uh, that kind of stuff. So it's weird. This is one of those things that's just a conversation piece in my collection. And as a collector, I appreciate stuff like this to kind of balance it out, right? This is an extreme. I always love handing this knife off to people and saying, look at this freaking thing. And they go, oh, wow, this is crazy, right? 
But then you tell them the price and they're like, that's ridiculous. How could any knife ever be worth that? That's not even the right question, right? If you find yourself asking that question, it's just you're on level one of Super Mario Bros, man. It gets way deeper than that. That's not, you don't have all the pieces there. You don't have the complete question yet, right? You do not have to buy this knife, and I don't even think you can, right? It's just a funny thing that exists, and I don't even know how to conclude this video. I don't even know if we can call this a review. It's just a funny thing. <laughs> but I, I'm happy. I think it's neat, right? Um, I'll tell you this, right? A lot of people might be wondering, like, okay, but you got that for free. Would you buy it? I don't know about this one, but I'll tell you, uh, and same way with the Vortex, but I'll tell you, I absolutely, had they not sent me a free Hephaestus, I definitely would have bought this one. This is this is the type of thing that I will go out of my way and buy. And you know what? There will be overbuilt Max Ace knives in the future. Maybe they won't be able to send me, and I will buy them because I do like this stuff, right? So maybe not this one. This one was a little wackadoo, but some of them, yes, absolutely. Thanks so much to Max Ace. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.